Joining us now is Matt Shea, CEO and President of the National Retail Federation. It was, it was a hot number and a surprise, Matt, wasn't it? Yeah, hi, hi, sir. Yeah, it was a hot number and it was a surprise to the upside. I think everybody saw that and is trying to dissect what it means. Uh, you referenced there a couple of things. I think if we just look at January as a discrete month, we, we know that we had a pretty good weather, which, which plays a role. We had very good, strong uh, job growth, which surely contributed. We saw the Social Security adjustments, the cost of living adjustments. Those things all uh, played a role. But we just have a really hot market. We have very resilient consumers. People are out there spending. And in spite of what they know and they tell us about concerns regarding inflation, they're still finding a way to get out there and spend. And we saw that in, in a surprisingly big way in January. Yeah, it was a broad report. Every category with, within the retail sales rose except for gas stations. The big, big jump in restaurants and bars spending up 7.2 percent. Matt, so, so does it suggest to you that the Fed has to do more to fight inflation? Because now better than expected retail sales, better than expected jobs report, and hotter than expected inflation rate yesterday. Yeah, well, I, I, Sarah, I guess we've all whether we do it for a living or not, we've, many of us have become sort of interested uh, mm -hmm. observers of, of the Fed, and we're all Fed watchers one way or another. Um, and, and I think the real issue here, and, and you know, the, the chairman of the Federal Reserve has been signaling this all along. Other members of the Board of Governors said these things yesterday. It's ultimately about services uh, and services inflation. There's been some deflation on the goods side, but it's about the jobs market. And if the jobs market is strong, that means there's competition for uh, employees. That means wage growth is high. That means people are going to spend, and that impacts inflation. And until they can really figure out how to attack that, uh, I think it's going to be a challenge. We still have you know, the, the JOLTS study, the, uh, the job openings and labor turnover study from earlier in January. We're still 11 million unfilled positions, about 5.5 million people state they're unemployed. So it's 1.7 or 1.8. Uh, unfilled jobs to workers looking for jobs. There's about a million in retail alone. So the labor market's very tight, and that doesn't seem to be changing very quickly. But what are you seeing in terms of some of the metrics we would look at, and we have been watching as, as it relates to pre-recessionary indicators? The savings rate, for instance, has gone way down. People have tapped into their savings. The more credit card debt on their balances. What, what are sort of the indicators that you're, that you're watching here, even with the spending boom? Yeah, I think you touched on some of those. I mean, the savings rate we really expanded dramatically. It was up to almost 30 percent uh, in the early stages of the pandemic. People had the pandemic paychecks and, and the bonuses that people got from the federal government, all the stimulus money. That went way down to about 2 percent, 2 or 3 percent last year. It's come back up maybe 6, 7, 8 percent. So it's, it's getting closer to you know, what we would consider a historic norm. Um, but, you know, that'll and some of that's going to continue to play out. There's probably still a, a trillion dollars there. The debt service ratio is actually really pretty good. It's below 10 percent of disposable after tax income. Mm. Historically, that's a 40, 40 year low. So the, we people have debt, but they're able to manage it uh, and finding ways to, to service the debt, even though they've taken on uh, more revolving credit. Uh, so those things look uh, pretty manageable at the moment. And with that savings still sitting there pre pandemic, a trillion more than we had going in. And I think that's, you know, your question about the Fed is how long can people rely on that, consumers, households, uh, working families, to offset the differential between uh, what they're earning and what they're spending on their monthly expenses? And we're also seeing some of that rotation from goods back into services. You know, that ratio really shifted. It went as high as 36 percent on goods during the pandemic from a historic. Usually it's about 31 percent relative goods to services. Now it's halfway back, maybe 33 percent. So goods right. are still elevated, but it's coming down, going back into services. Mm -hmm. And that's really driving that in the labor shortage, driving all the services inflation. And that's, I think, complicating the Fed's job.